Session Blood. All right, everyone. Welcome back to Session Blood, episode five. Coming to you from lockdown, since unfortunately we're back there in, in New Zealand at the moment. But it's fine. We'll get through. But more importantly, it's Crucible of War. It's spoil season. I'm super excited. Exactly. And we can focus on the spoilers instead of worrying about roads to nationals and all these other tournaments. How do you know, I let's focus on what really thing. matters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, so I can see a few cards have been spoiled recently, which I'm super excited about. But I think before we get into any of that, we've just got to get right down to business and talk about the spoiler card that we've been given. Yeah, so the card is a Ninja Majestic. Um, it's called Heron's Flight. Yep, and it is... So at zero cost Majestic, Heron's Flight, red. So the card reads, Combo. If Crane Dance was the last attack this combat chain, Heron's Flight gains plus two attack, and you choose attack action or non-attack action. Heron's Flight can only be defended by cards of the chosen type. We see it's got base 3 power and base 3 defense. Yeah, and I think from right off the bat what we could do is c compare and contrast versus cards that uh, kind of s have similar stats. So the thing that I think we can c you know, look at firstly is I think that's, Rising Knee Thrust. Yeah. That's a good comparison because they're both zero cost and with the combo bonus they attack for 5. Um, mm -hmm. Now I, I think it looks pretty clearly here that this card is the end of a combat chain um, because it, yep. it mentions Crane Dance, which looks to be, I'm thinking, the middle one in a chain, and it doesn't have go again. So in that way, it's almost similar to something like Fluster Fist in a, in a way as well, like Red Fluster Fist. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, at first when I saw the card, I thought that it attacks for four, so I was like, what? This is like a bit of Fluster Fist. Um, but... Yeah, the stats, so the stats are quite similar, and that is the end of the chain. So it says, if Crane Dance yeah, so is the last attack. That, that's interesting, would... because for all, all our listeners out there, we, we don't actually know what Crane Dance is, so we haven't been told, we haven't been get, getting any hints. Um, mm -hmm. But I know you've done a little bit of research into this, Carol. Yeah, so I have a bit of a theory that Crane Dance is the card that um, w one of the, you know, Twitter clues was that it, um, it it follows the chain from two different cards yeah check. so um so i read up basically check this out i read that white crane kung fu is a rare chinese martial art which combines foot techniques hand techniques and weapons training um so w w you know i did a bit of googling and reading that made me think maybe it's got something to do with a leg tab and a head jab yeah, so um, I see, see we, we've gone pretty deep, you know, we, we don't get given the card, but we look into it anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, so that, that is my theory, is that we're going to see um, this chain follow from maybe two starting uh, kind of, you know, the, combo the starts of the yeah, combo starters. Yeah, because I'm, I'm a, a ninja player, I, I haven't played it recently, but it's still kind of my original class, so I love ninja, so I was super excited when I saw this card. Um, just to go over what Carol was saying again, on the Fab TCG official Twitter, there was a tweet that mentioned there's a combo card that checks for two different combo starters, or two other cards. So yeah. my hope is that Crane Dance is that card, and I wouldn't have had a look at uh, things like Surging Strike, again, to see if that was sort of a hand attack. Um, Carol mentioned to me that one look, almost looks like more of a like a magical attack in a way, whereas Head Jab and Leg Tap are two sort of physical, like Head Jab's hitting with the fist, Leg Tap hitting with the legs, two just sort yeah. of obviously physical martial art techniques. Um, and I just think if, if Crane Dance is a card that follows both of those, that's super exciting. Yeah, and I think it really opens up Ninja for so many possibilities. I mean, not only does it add, like, you know, the, a completely new finisher, and it's a very specific finisher, you know, we'll cover the ability later on, but, you know, just the fact that you have more options to choose from is going to make Ninja a lot harder to play around because, you you know, bef pre before the game, you won't know exactly which combo they're trying to go into. 
Yeah. Um, and, you know, um, at the moment, I feel like the kind of Mugenshi's Lord of the Wind combo is a bit of a staple. Um, you know, in most aggro decks, I mean, most ni aggro ninja lists. Um, but yeah. I think because of this, we're going to see a lot more variation and, you know, potential strategies for ninja. Yeah, because one of the issues with ninja is uh, the consistency sometimes. So, you know, it's never good when you're starting off your combat chain, uh, your turn with a leg tap, and you're looking at sort of a whelming gust wave in hand or an open the center. And yeah. you just really need that cut to hit to get anything off. And then they block it out and that kind of ends your turn almost. Well, not ends it, but it really shuts down what you're able to do. And I think that what you mentioned as well, it adds a little bit of sort of uh, unpredictability or unpredictability uh, uh, to the deck. And that even for things like leg tap, when you open up with that chain, often if, unless you're ahead, the other player can sort of have the luxury of ch picking and choosing what they want to block. So if they don't want to get blown mm -hmm. out by like hurricane technique, they can just say, okay, I'll just block it in this particular way and it'll be fine. Or yeah. in the center for head jab. Where, and the same thing with Surging Strike, Whelm and Gust Wave, McGinchies. Um, often, you know, you find some of the top players, they'll sometimes look at what's the worst case scenario. I mean, can I just take the Surging Strike, double block the Gust Wave, double block the McGinchies, and then just reset next turn? So yeah. I, I really like that this card adds sort of a few options to the deck and you can hide from your opponent a little bit what you're trying to do. Well, I, well, that's what we're speculating, if Crane dances yeah, that Yeah, and I mean, it's something that, you know, maybe um, because it's so flexible, because it kind of works with the pre-existing, I mean, we think that it'll work yeah. for the pre, pre <laughs> we don't know that for sure, but uh, if it does work with the um, other starters of the combo, then maybe it's like a sideboard option as well. Um, and I feel like this ability, you know, it, now kind of jumping into the ability itself um just you know choosing whether your opponent can't block with non-attack or can only block with attacks or non-attacks um i think you know you can really limit the amount of blocks your opponent you, can do yeah I, I really like that aspect of the card because um one thing that immediately leapt out to me as soon as i saw that card is Similar to Command and Conquer in a way, it can't be blocked by defense reactions. Um, yeah. Which is pretty cool, cause especially against Ninja. Sometimes if the other player is trying to save that defense react to hit the last bit in your chain, um, mm -hmm. or you know they, they want to be able to save that for next turn, this can sometimes maybe force them out to play it early if it's on a crane dance, and then it allows you to follow up with a different card. And mm -hmm. I think another thing that people might sort of miss on a first read, which I had to go back and double check, is this card can't be blocked by equipment. And I think that's... It can't be blocked by equipment, can't be blocked by attack reactions, defense reactions. You know, you might read it at first and go, okay, so it's only attacks or non-attacks, but it really specifies what it can be blocked with, which removes all these other things, you know? Um, yeah, which we'll... I think it's, it's it just seems like a card that really helps Ninja push through the crucial damage. It looks like that kind of finisher, you know, maybe both players on, are on around 3-4 life type situation. Um, and this really gets that final damage through. Yeah, it really makes your opponent think even more when blocking, I think, as well. Um, you know, though I can't just double block this for 6 with any two cards in my hands. You know, a previous part of the combo. Because they might be thinking, if they've got the Heron Slight, like, I need to be saving options in my hand to block that. And, yeah. and there's particular decks, I think, out there that do tend to skew heavily towards attack actions or heavily towards non-attack actions. Um, yeah. I feel like Ninja is one of those decks that uh, most of your deck, I feel, is either attack actions or attack reactions. Yeah, I mean, d does Ninja run any non-attack actions, really? Maybe I mean, Plunder Run. Not that many. Uh, there's Plunder Run as, as one that comes <laughs> to mind. That's about it. And yeah, so for me, the thing that first popped out into my mind when seeing this was Wizards. I mean, you just name attack actions, right? And they just can't block this, basically, with anything unless they run, like, Scars or um, Enlightened Strikes or something. Yeah, that that's true. I've just I just went there and pulled up my ninja deck list actually and yeah, like uh non attack actions are pretty few and far between. Like it's <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> And yeah, that's a really good point about Wizard, which I hadn't really thought of. Um if because I know like playing against Wizard at the moment on Ninja, 
against some really good ninja, uh, wizard players, it can be pretty tough because... Uh, they just block everything up. They just block everything up and then just sort of burn you away during your turn, uh, during their turn. Um, and this just gives mm-hmm. you a whole other option. But I'm, I'm thinking even decks like Warrior, that I know there's, yeah. there's, there's Redline Warrior decks that run sort of, you know, Scar for Scars, Rebels, that sort of thing. But I think naming mm-hmm. non-attack action against... Uh, sorry, naming attack action is really strong against them because... I mean, there's certain lists that run very, very few attack actions, and mm-hmm. ones that are running attacks, a lot of them only block for two at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you know, your Heron's Flight, and if the only thing they can block with is a Scar, I think you're going to be happy with that. Um, and also, I think it's it could be a card that is designed for those kind of control matchups as well. I mean, um, you know, things like... We, we've seen these kind of like one turn kill rune blade lists for example that run very very few actual attacks um and you know have all defense reactions and and non-attack actions and just name it attack action and i guess the only thing they can really block with is uh arc knight ascendancy yeah um no. And it seems quite good as well, because I feel against Ninja, often you're wanting to save your equipment as long as possible for those sort of critical blocks where you need them. And mm-hmm. this is a kind of card that, even say in the mid-game, um, and one thing is for, for Crane Stance, we don't know how much damage that does, or whether it has additional effects. Um, but it might, like, you know, Gust Wave has on hit draw a card, so we don't, yeah. uh, we, who knows what Crane Dance does. If that has an additional effect on it as well, then... It puts them in that position thinking like, do I block out the crane dance with this and hope they don't have the heron slight and then if they do, you really punish mm-hmm. them or if it puts them in a really difficult spot of having to let the crane dance through. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I actually, I think it's really cool because the things like um, helping you trigger mask of momentum or even other interactions. Exactly, exactly. And I feel like it's, it's a card that um, basically... If you, if you name the right thing, you're going to get a mask trigger. Yeah, because the thing is as well, like um, because it cuts out equipment and defense reactions, there's a good chance you can name the correct card and they can only block for three or only block for two, and then it's getting through. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to use it as a finisher, I think it helps. It allows Ninja in a way to try and set up for late game. Um, because I, I know that there are ways to do it at the moment where you, know, you try and set up a massive turn at the end of the game with your energy potion out, and you set up your five mm-hmm. card sort of full surging strike combo line with with razor reflex, which is pretty tough to get through. Um, but this card, mm-hmm. if you're pretty confident you're, you're going to be able to get to the heron slide and put through pressure, saving a razor reflex on that, trying to get through five damage, that can just be enough to totally win the game. Yeah, and we could see actually more of these kind of control ninja lists with that kind of. You know, you just basically set this in Arsenal and get a crane dance um, and just basically work it out in a, in a very late game situation where you know most of the cards your opponent's playing, um, that you basically guarantee that thing to hit and just deal a bunch of damage. Yeah, that, that's that true. You can't well. even block. And um, in a way, you can set it up with only two cards because if with your Snapdragon scalers up, um, or this is assuming Crane Dance costs one or less, uh, mm-hmm. then you could just go Crane Dance straight into Heron Slight with Snapdragon Scalers. Um, and yeah. I, I know one thing we were told when we were given this card is that it's a bit of a red herring, which is, I thought, quite interesting. I, I was trying to figure out what that meant. Like, is there a chance Crane Dance isn't even coming in this set? Or, and sorry, just for our viewers out there, so a red herring is generally sort of a piece of information or clue it's meant to be misleading or distracting away from the main point so <laughs> yeah i when i heard that i was That's trying a, more of a red heron to be honest yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i i wonder what that meant i'm i'm kind of i am really hoping that we do get the crane dance in there and i really hope crane dance is that card that can check for one of two combat openers um yeah but who knows? You it's, know, it's like it's like yeah, one of these spoilers that you're just like left with more questions than answers. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> we were told we can ask any questions about the card except anything related to crane dance. So <laughs> 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 that, that that was quite funny. Um, but but yeah, I mean to be honest, like in in general, looking at Crucible so far, and I mean we've seen these warrior cards, we've seen some Rune Blade cards. 
I'm just excited for each class to have a bigger pool to choose from and you know after seeing some of the Runeblade cards I've I've just I think I came up with five different lists already of you know potential ways you can take the class which is super exciting yeah um, so I'm gonna have see yeah 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 because um, I, I think it'd be nice to discuss some of those spoiler cards that have come out and I think the one that leapt out to me immediately as a room because I played Rune Blades um, at a ro two road to nationals events last weekend. Um, some of our listeners mm -hmm. might have heard. Didn't quite make it, but I, was, I kept thinking of making the deck. It just seems to be missing a few cards here and there to push it over the line. And meet and greet from Rune Blade is the one that just immediately leapt out. Like, yeah, I really like that card. Yeah, so the meet and greet. So it's the one that's when it's uh, if it hits, it creates a Rune Chant token. And also, if you deal or if you have dealt or deal arcane damage to an opposing hero, it can go again. So that is just really cool because if you start with like one rune chant token in play, it really mm -hmm. opens up like a lot of options. You could go something like scar for a scar. They might just let the one rune chant through, and then now you've got a follow up four damage attack with go again, where if it hits, it makes a rune chant token. Or even if you've yeah. been setting up for a big turn, if you've got four rune chants in play. You throw out any attack, something like a Rune Flash, any attack with Go again, even just meeting group by itself. Suddenly they're having to pitch two cards to turn off the Go again on it, and and the fact that it just makes a Rune Chant when it hits as well, mm -hmm. like yeah. And and to be honest, even you know it's something like having if, if you're you know blocked up with most of your hand, you have one Rune Chant. I don't know for maybe a reduce to um, reduce or a previous turn. Um, and you know they've basically you've, there's a lot more pressure to to block up that rune chant. Yeah, just and it just opens up some really cool turns as well, where you can do stuff like one rune chant and play like pitch a blue, play a come to fight, play meet and greet, and then potentially have tunic plus one resource up for a weapon swing as well on top of that. Um, yeah. And now they've got a pitch. And you know stuff like razor reflex can. Um can be more useful in the rune blade lists as well with more one cost um attacks yeah definitely because race it's a bit of a weird fit sometimes razor reflex because there's a lot of rune blade cards it doesn't work on um but with cards like meet and greet and of course razor reflex works on the weapon as well um yeah i i think you could definitely it, that could be even something you run three of in a fully aggro go wide version or you can even just run sort of a sneaky one or two of in certain decks. Um, and yeah, there's just a, a lot of bonuses there. There's a, a lot of cool effects. And, and it, maybe if we just look at um, the Runeblade weapon quickly as well, Reaping Blade. So yeah. that has a static ability that if a hero has more life than any other hero, they can't gain life. Um, so it doesn't look amazing on paper, but I think that opens up some really good sideboard options for Runeblade. Um, you know, mm. thinking decks currently. And like... you know, it's for me, it's really interesting seeing a weapon with a static effect like this. Um, it's for me, um, since it's the first weapon, I'm thinking maybe every weapon's going to get her a static effect. You know? Yeah, that could be cool. And I think the card like that really opens up different uh, archetypes, really, of the deck. Like you can play one turn kill rune blade or OTK, where you just sit there and mm -hmm. build up a ton of root chance and try killing one hit. The problem with that strategy against slower decks at the moment is they can just gain too much life to to shut you down. Yeah, with sigils, sun kisses, and by the time you actually generate some um, rune chants, they have like 55, 60 55 life. 55 life, <laughs> yeah. Which, and, um, and just other things as well against decks like maybe uh, the dash midrange that has that really explosive high octane Tome of Findale combo. Um, mm -hmm. This can really sort of help shut that down if you're like a little bit of life behind you can maybe even structure your turns to try and make sure they are one life ahead of you at certain times. And yeah, and I, f I feel like against a deck like Dash, I don't know, from my experience, most of the time I'm either even life or just below through most of the early game. Yeah, and, and so I, I think that um, cards like that have, are going to really open up uh, the meta game. So, so many options and the fact that it just it's a one resource attack the three you know that's pretty good just by itself as well yeah definitely because i think rune blade so far I found, fell into 
to this kind of trap where you know you can you can do a bunch of damage early and you can go head to head with your opponent but then later later in the game you kind of start running out of cards because even your weapon you kind of need to use the card to um you know play a non-attack action yeah for it to to get pumped to attack so you tend to run out of cards quite um quickly yeah, just being um, able to... And this, the, this can be a um, kind of solution to these matchups where you did tend to run out of cards. Yeah, it, it lets you play sort of a more sort of control style in a way where you might just be wanting to, like, yeah, I'll, I'll block most of your hand and attack for three. Like, force out a one. Yeah. Force out a block kind of thing. Um, and particularly, in the, yeah, in the late game, if they're sort of on, you know, two or three life, the weapon hitting for one isn't really effective. Weapon hitting for three, pretty good. But Yeah, and also it's, you know... Cards like Chains of Eminence, which are so hard, you know, they're so good late game, but it's so hard to get them um, to the bottom of your deck. Now you can just pitch pitch one attack and save it for, for maybe like a super late game finish. Yeah, and it just really helps with those clunky hands where you're stuck with a red card in hands and you just have to pass and do nothing. But, um, yeah. Speaking of weapons though, if we have a look at Warrior, there's definitely some exciting cards coming in there. Now, I, I think the big one a lot of well, two two people have looked at but the big one in regards to the weapon i think is dauntless the one that gives plus three yeah. attack and then the next defense reaction defending player plays costs an additional resource to play absolutely i feel like this this is the card that everyone's just been like mm -hmm. oh my god this is so good all these warrior players are getting excited to force your opponent like you know to over pitch for their unmovables and things but mm -hmm. you know what i'm going to be controversial and say it's not as overpowered as people are saying in my opinion it's a decent rare um you know it's going to see a lot of play in certain matchups and stuff but i don't see it as kind of like this staple in every deck yeah that's um, it's interesting because i i know a few people have been saying it seems like an automatic sort of six um six to to nine of even um mm -hmm. because i looked at and i thought what jumped out as me is that it makes cards like sink below and fateful scene cost costs one, one resource and yeah, um, that's massive cost four. and um even yeah. and mirrors steel blade shan't cost two you can't just tunic it so to mm -hmm. me that looked really really strong but what, what's sort of your thought process of thinking why it might not be as good as some people say i feel like the card is um you know it, it's great but let's compare it to something like warrior's valor or nature's path i mean you you in order for it to be like useful you still have to get you give your weapon go again so i feel like the card is very reliant on glint and if you are relying on cards like driving blade or warrior's valor you know that's already two kind of pre-pumps that you're using you know you pitch a blue play play this card play a warrior's valor and attack and that's already three cards gone um and i i, I feel like you know if your opponent can uh, block it up with not you know if they're not specifically relying on defense reacts they can just probably block with normal cards um, yeah and i guess one thing is like if they if they just block it up for six and like you say they they pump and get it through and your weapon doesn't have go again you take a little bit of damage but then you just save your defense reaction for next time i yeah i, I do i mean, I, I, mean I, th I think it's definitely going to punish digs that you know, have way too many de defense reactions. You know, at the moment we see these dash control lists with like 12, 15 yeah. or even more defense reacts. Um, and, you know, it, I feel like this is a great card versus those decks. But if you're versing a deck that, you know, has standard good blocks and a few defense reacts sprinkled on top, then it might cause, you know, it kind of awkward hands now and then but it's not like a game winning card in my opinion yeah we, we might see it sort of boarded in or taken out for certain matchups um i can see a lot of warrior lists at least running through the red one for sure um and possibly the blue yeah. for resources but may, maybe it's a card that's better in some matchups and not as good in others i like I, I also think that defense reactions as a whole i just kind of you know, many people have this um, opinion that, oh, I have to run, you know, three sinks and three fates in my deck uh, and versus everything type thing. Um, personally, I found myself taking out more and more defense reacts, um, even against matchups like Ninja and Warrior. Um, 
and maybe this card is just meant for punishing those players who don't and just keep a lot of you know just keep a lot of these defense react yeah um if we just but i i would say i would say it's a solid card yeah you know it's not overpowered or anything so if we just look at uh because we've got a few cards to get through if we just look at unified decree quickly it almost looks like a a a card similar to route in a way it pitches for yellow which is good uh cost two resources Mm -hmm. so it gives it uh, the attack plus three and reprise lets you look at the top card and if it's an attack reaction you can uh, banish and then play it this combat chain so yeah so see now that's a warrior card that i'm really excited about um because it can kind of shift your whole um list you know you know just you, i think we're going to see a warrior decks that go this kind of path of pumping your weapon before it attacks and heavily like heavy digs on attack reactions yeah because um, i'm and I, th- th- this kind of um th- this card really works well with rebels it i finally see a use for a stroke of foresight um that can really push this card to the next level yeah, because things like Stroke of Foresight, um, at the moment, like the reprise effect is nice, but I feel a lot of the time it's it's kind of just like, oh, it's either not relevant or I hope I hit something, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, and I mean, it, we, we've seen it used, oh, like it's an okay ability to use with Nature's Path Pilgrimage, because you can really set that card up. Um, but, you know, with this new card, we, I think we're going to see these two work together really nicely. Yeah, and, and finally, if we just look at uh, Out for Blood, I think to me that looks like a card that will replace Razor Reflex um, in a lot of Warrior decks. So it gives you a target mm-hmm. weapon attack plus three for one resource, blocks for three, and the reprise is uh, if they've blocked, it, your next attack gains plus one. Um, a big use I see for that is, I mean, it can buff things like Command and Conquer, for example, to get to seven, but also I think a cool um, interaction with this card is it lets you get that Braveforge Braces effect for free, effectively. If you Warrior's Valor and attack through with this, it means your next attack, if you've got one resource up, you can still attack for four and force a bit of an awkward block rather than just yeah. having to attack for three again and they block with one card. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, it's really similar to this Stroke of Foresight, so we're going to see these t- two cards kind of fight for the spot in the deck. Um, it's going to give Warrior a lot more options, but you know, the effects are similar enough to just kind of, um, basically be in there for, depending on which player has which preference. I think the red line aggro might still see a lot of raises in there, but, um, kind of more weapon heavy warriors will, will love this card. Yeah, for sure. And just scrolling down, having a look at the generics now, um, now, Gambler's Gloves, I think everyone's kind of seen that and had their thoughts on it, um, so we don't need to go into mm-hmm. that too much. Um, one thing I just want to point out, though, is is that either player can use Gambler's Gloves, so there might be certain situations, maybe if you're playing against the Brute, a particular version, you know, you want to throw that in to make them re-roll scab skins, or... Um, but I can... I, at the moment, with the cards we've seen, I see that maybe being a Brute card. Having a, a deck that runs three crazy brews and a gambler's gloves. Yeah, um, I'd like to see that. Because um, I because we we're, just that we're talking about warrior. Um, Kieran and I did before the calling brew a warrior list that ran crazy brews. It was kind of like a warrior control deck that relied on getting you know determination supremacy hand and after rolling. F- if you if you pop three crazy brews, I think the chances of hitting that you know five six roll around f- roughly seventy one percent something like that. I think so. We we try to figure it out, but I think it was somewhere around yeah. that. <laughs> but imagine the odds with gambler's gloves now, you know. <laughs> yeah, but then you you don't get to run the brave force braces, but you know you commit you commit to the strat. <laughs> yeah, you don't need braces. I, I think the funny thing is we we figured out because the whole strategy was to get three crazy brews and play, and then crack them all, and then we realized later on that you could just run. Get an energy potion, a potion of strength, and a time snap, and it's it's the same thing. But <laughs> <laughs> but it was good fun. It was good fun to play. Yeah, but hey, you know, maybe your next attack gets plus six. You get three action points. Six energy. Uh, <laughs> six energy. Imagine that warrior turn, you know. Um, and then we've got Coats of Commotion, which 
was the first card spoiled on the uh, Flesh and Blood fan page by the um, the founder of the page, Winway. Um, and that's a card that is really interesting because it's one of those things that gives positive effects to both players if it hits, but some effects are better than others for certain decks. So it can make either, if it hits, mm -hmm. you can choose any number of each hero makes a quicken token or draws a card, uh, gains one life. So... Yeah. I can so, see uh, maybe uh, replacing uh, Snatch, possibly. Yeah, and to be honest, um, when I first read the card, I was like, oh, it's, it's pretty good. You know, it, it's very powerful. Um, and I feel like, you know, powerful effects like this, especially on a zero-cost card, can definitely be abused. You know, you just razor it and chain into, like, use that Quicken token straight away into your card, drawn card, you know. Things like Ninja or ranger can really push through a lot of damage with this um but what i didn't realize is that you get to choose which abilities you want to use um yeah which just makes this insane yeah because i think the quick and token one in particular to me left out is something that's really sort of asymmetrical in a way like if you're if you're playing warrior against ninja and you hit with this card i feel like mm -hmm. giving them a quick and token isn't as painful because so many of their cards just naturally have go again or Kadachis have go again and go again doesn't true and even if if they have two arrows you know maybe they just can't put arsenal them oh, against ranger oh Stuff sorry I, I was saying ninja oh, but, okay. but ranger oh, too. okay yeah and um just to let people know so go again doesn't stack so if a card has go again and quicken gives it go again you do only get the the one action point so yeah, I mean, if you're if you're worried and you hit with this and you get go again, um, or you set up a quicken token, so you could use it instead of flock even because it costs zero. You don't have to reveal a card. Um, I feel it's really good against some decks, even maybe something like Bravo. Yeah, and it, it, just just the attack. mind games, you know. Just just imagine that this is the only card in your hand and you play it, and your opponent, or maybe not the only card, but you know, you have a card in Arsenal and you play this. Um, maybe you have some resources spare and your opponent might just be freaking out thinking, you know, what are they going to do? So they just rather block it up. Um, yeah, yeah. So just the, the potential of the effect can have a massive impact on how your opponent approaches blocking this. Yeah, definitely. Cause you don't know what they're going to do. Like, are they going to make it? Yeah. Cause what happen? if you're like, oh, you know what? I, I do want to draw a card and I do want to get a quick and token and then you let it through and they're just like, oh just get it in life or something yeah or even if, if you've got no cards in hand right and then you you play coax commotion like or if you play if you've got like a card in arsenal and you play coax and they're thinking well i might just let it through and if both players you know i don't care about the card draw and then you flip over something like a razor or even like a sigil of solace or a remembrance from arsenal instant card and yeah you get the bonus but yeah so i don't know i feel that card's pretty cool imagine that you razor and then you draw a snatch and then you snatch with a quick and token and they're just <laughs> thinking damn should have blocked it and i think the final card i just want to look at quickly is one that was spoiled just before we started recording today um now i don't know if i'm saying this right but gorganian tomb gorganian tomb tome um tome. yeah gorganian that, card, tome, that that card. I, when i first read it i thought okay this is some kind of weird multiplayer you know this is <laughs> you play this in the um in the pit kind of format and you just hope that you draw it last out of all the players but the more i thought about it the more uses i found for it and i think it's actually going to be a bit of a money card this one yeah and just to um to let people know that was the spoiler for fab db um so i encourage you they have an article attached to that there with some questions and answers um i encourage you to go have a look at that as well and FabDB in yeah, general. FabDB.net. Yeah, that's a um, very good resource in general. For, they've got an amazing deck builder. It's great if you're playing tabletop or even just trying out ideas, um, a collection. Yeah, gatherer. and it, the deck builder does have some really good statistics attached to it. So if you're kind of brewing a list and you're not sure about maybe, you know, you can't be bothered physically counting out all the yellows and blues and reds, this Gives you a really clear list of everything. Yeah, so I definitely encourage you to check out Fab. It, it is free as well, or if you like using service, I encourage you to sign up for Patreon. It's a couple of dollars a month or something. Um, but yeah, just wanted to give a quick shout out to that before we talk about the card. Um, but the yeah, you, but I've this card can be insane. You want interesting? It's got uh, no pitch value, 
So this card actually cannot be pitched. And I believe that's the first card we've seen like that. Yeah, I think it's um, it's really interesting because, yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it is the only one, um, you know, other than the equipment that starts in play. Um, but this this card is just screams like more mind games to me. You know, if you draw it, you have to play it yeah, at so, any so point in the game. Just to read it out quickly in case people are listening and, and can't, haven't seen it yet. Um, so it's a zero cost. It's a mythic, but you can only have one in your deck. So you draw X cards where X is 1 plus the number of Gorganian tomes in all graveyards and it has go again. So there's really that sort of mind game aspect for it. Um, I mean, I think decks like Runeblade really like this card because of the Fizzerai Vizir- ability. Um, mm-hmm. Just getting to replace this, draw a card and it turns on your weapon. It can uh, start generating rune chants on your next card that you play. Um, but if yeah, you do just play... getting getting a rune chant, just one rune chant is that that's still fine. Yeah, but then if you do play it, um, if you're the person who plays it first, then you're thinking at some point in the game they might get a zero cost card that draws them two cards with go again, which is just mm-hmm. incredibly good. That, that is so so good. So I can see. Yeah, it. and and I guess like things like sync or enlighten strike that you know let you can trip the card without. Um, you know, put it back on, on the bottom of your deck without actually pitching it become more useful. Yeah, because if you draw this and it's not great for you to play right away, exactly, something like Sync Blower and Lightning Strike, again, showing why Lightning Strike is such a versatile card because it's got those three modes, but also that extra, the alternative cost can actually be super helpful. Um, and mm-hmm. I, I know... And, um... Sorry. Yeah, go, go on. I was going to say, I've also <laughs> heard some players discussing how um, could be really good in Wizard. Um, yeah. I know uh, Nick Butcher, who's uh, one of the top Australian players, he saw this and mentioned that, because um, one of the effects that I actually didn't realize, which you pointed out to me, Carol, is that when you, if you use Kanan's ability and you get an action with Go again, um, you end up with two action points because you haven't used an action. So going something mm-hmm. like Kano, reveal the tome, play the tome, draw a card, now you've got two action points. And in Wizard... That just seems really good for if you want to set up combos. Like um, yeah, just just a disclaimer that you do have to do it on your own turn. Oh yeah, yeah um, good point. Good point. And just for all the wizards wizard players out there, it's actually a pretty useful thing to know that if you have a lot of cards in hand, it's actually a, there could be a lot of value in using Kano before you use your action on your turn, rather than trying to um, Kano at the end of your opponent t- opponent's turn. Yeah, because even cards like Whisper of the Oracle, again, um, you can use that, get it off with Kano, and then you get to opt to, and then you've got two action points. Anyway, going back to the card, yeah. but that's um, so that those are two two decks that sort of jumped out as really being able to use that card, and I'm sure like all the players out there will be sort of theory crafting and coming up with ideas um, or decks that yeah, can use and this. Another another use for it is you can have it in your arsenal. And whenever you want to do a big hand, you know, you can, uh, if there's any interactions with, with your hand, then this just gives you an actual physical five card hand. Yeah. And, and other things that, um, that we've seen is at least the sort of quite fun interactions as well. If you play your, you play your tome early and then at some point the other player thinks, okay, I'm going to capitalize. I'm going to draw my two cards. Um, you can actually respond to them playing Tome by playing Remembrance, shuffle it back into your deck, and then they only get the one card off it, which is um, which is a bit of a, a niche play. It might not come up that often, but it's... <laughs> I, I, I love, you know, I, I can't wait for players to set up this crazy play. They Tome early, they, they Remembrance in Arsenal, waiting for the other player, and the other player just goes Red Line Ninja and yeah. just... <laughs> You're trying to do all this tricky stuff. Yeah, because there's so, um, many, so many decks, even in Ninja, which it doesn't immediately jump out as a card you can use in Ninja, but, I mean, you can... Um, if you basically just want to fix your hand, you just play it and go up to five cards if you're missing that key combo piece. Um, and it does cost zero, so, I mean, you probably don't want to use it this way, but it, in, if you absolutely need a card to discard the Katsu, you could do it. I mean, very painful because you're <laughs> sitting up there trying to... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
you, you, <laughs> turn one, discard my tome. <laughs> yeah, you, you discard your tome, they block out your hand and then play their tome draw two. You're like, ooh, I shouldn't yeah. have listened to Karen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually, I feel like it's, it's a card that, um, you know, has that kind of control aspect to it. Um, and I think with bigger, the bigger the pools of for each class, I think we're gonna see a lot more options for these kind of control builds um, to shine, really. Yeah, definitely. So, and I think that even just with a few cards released so far, um, I think, like we mentioned when we were saying why we we're excited for Crucible of War, there's already so many options just opening up, so many different like uh, decks that are playable now. Decks that no one's thought of already. It's um, I don't know. It's it's super exciting. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I just want to see some more equipment and weapons, to be honest. Yeah, because so spoiler season's going through till the twenty sixth of August. So uh, keep your eyes peeled on the fabtcg.com website. Um, there is an article with a running list of of spoilers and upcoming spoilers. And um, I'd encourage you as well because it it links the the website or the the page or whatever for the people who are spoiling them. And I definitely encourage you to go and check them out and just sort of support the ecosystem, um, help out the community a bit. Definitely, definitely. All right, well, There's like, a lot of good content being um, pumped out, which is good to see. Yeah, like there's a bunch of different websites. Metrics Daily, I know you've written a lot of articles for them. And oh, I've seen, yeah. I've seen a few more um, podcasts and gameplay videos popping up um, in Europe and the United States. Um, yeah, I actually did. I'm going to be writing an article um, for a spoiler for Metrics Daily, and whew, that I think that card's going to be insane. Yeah, because I, I know you can't tell us anything, but the only thing I've heard is that it's a very good card. So, <laughs> which could literally be anything. But uh, but I no. Um, what I said was I didn't say it's very good. I think it's just going to make the most impact on flesh and blood fans. Ooh. That's a big call, and so, t- <laughs> and um, unfortunately, Carol is uh, keeping it close to his chest. Won't even share a little hint, which is it's good. You gotta you, if you get a spoiler, you gotta respect it. So, but that's absolutely. Cool. Um, all right. Well, I think that pretty much brings us to the end of this. Um, if people are listening on Spotify, uh, please go and check out the YouTube channel as well, because there will be a video, basically giving a visual spoiler of this card. Um, yeah, so definitely drop a comment um, on the YouTube and let us know of, of all the spoilers and, you know, there might be some things you disagree with with what we said. Um, I'm really, I really want to see what people think about these cards, so yeah, drop definitely. us a comment. Because there's a lot of things we miss and we're not always right, so um, we're really keen to hear any feedback or, or what you guys, guys and girls out there think of all the cards. So yeah, don't list terrible card terrible. <laughs> it's controversial, Carol. <laughs> all right. Well, um, thanks for listening, everyone. If uh, if you're in lockdown somewhere in the world, stay safe out there, and we'll uh, hope to see you all again soon. Oh yeah, can't wait for Crucible. Can't wait. Session blood.